everyone. I want to thank Oris and Koresha for organizing this talk. I am Rosanna Hu, co-founder and partner of Nian Hu Design and Research Office based in Shanghai, China. And I'm speaking to you from China here. Um, as with all architects, the place we come from and the place we work sets the stage for our architectural and design explorations. Um, three conditions guide us here um, over the past 16 years in our practice. And um, if we were to simplify and uh, define them in uh, simple ways, the first one, uh, we would call it the, the urban issue of rapid development and demolition uh, in China. And it's exemplified by this, um, these two images here. Uh, on the left um, by Nada Condor, uh, it's called Chongqing Municipality, um, done in 2007. And Jia Zhang Ke, um, film still from 24 City, 2008. Uh, both of these show the madness of concrete monsters that define the urban reality. Um, and these next set of images are also from Nada Condor. Uh, they show how urbanization changes the landscape of cities, altering the texture of daily life, giving uh, rise to new notions of urban leisure. The second, we would term it the rural issues of disappearing villages. Um, these set of images are really powerful because each empty chair representing an absent family member who has left the village to pursue opportunities in urban centers. And the third condition, inheriting the remnants of China's industrial heritage, which leads to an opportunity to reutilize artifacts of leftovers through adaptive reuse. Many of our projects fall under this category of adaptive reuse and deal with local history and heritage. In much of our work, there is this recurring theme of juxtaposing um, the old and the new to uh, reinterpretation of local typologies and a desire to celebrate and even elevate the mundane. As early as about 15 years ago, we became interested and almost obsessed with the notion of nostalgia. And it was about the time that we started our practice 15 years ago in Shanghai. We gained useful insights from a critical examination of the term, its origin, theory surrounding it, applications in various forms of disciplines, and the various architectural extensions and possibilities this reading um, offers us. The word nostalgia is a learned formation of a Greek compound, compound word um, consisting of nostos, meaning homecoming, and algos, meaning pain or ache. Coined around the end of the 17th century as a medical term, nostalgia was thought to be a disease. It was only towards the first half of the 19th century that nostalgia began to attain its current modern meaning, both in literary and everyday usage. Now commonly understood as a sentimentality for the past, it should be noted that the object of longing is transferred from the concreteness of place to the invariably abstract notion of time. In further studying this idea of nostalgia, we came upon Professor Svalana Bohm's book, 
The Future of Nostalgia, where she divided this notion into two types. Um, the first one being restorative and the second one, second one being reflective. Embedded in the title of the project is our attempt to set the project within its historical and typological context. Um, we call this project that I'm going to show, um, the first one, uh, Rethinking the Split House. The Ling houses, which were once the dominant fabric of urban Shanghai, are now slowly being demolished, taking over by high density developments all over the city. And you can see um, images like this. Uh, you might think it's uh, a piece of artwork or some installation, but it actually happens in uh, our everyday life when we drive around the city. And here um, is um, our site. Uh, it's located in a um, very um, uh, prominent and centrally located uh, lane community in Shanghai. So our strategy was um, to rethink the typology of the Lang House, keeping the split level formation and add uh, spatial interest through new insertions and skylights to accentuate the architectural integrity of such a typology. Historically, the Lang Houses are separated with two distinct spaces. Here you can see in um, the floor plans a longer and often rectilinear space with a smaller room in the back that creates a split section. They are now typically occupied by three or more families sharing the public stair staircase and landings so that neighbors living on different levels or rooms have a chance to interact as they move in and out of their personal units. Our first move here was to insert a new staircase, which served to act as a vertical connection and at the same time to serve to lock in or join in the front room with the back room. Here you see the old and the new stairs uh, side by side in this photograph. This is on the ground floor. The bathrooms, conceivably the most intimate spaces of each apartment, are inserted next to the most public stairway, separated only with a sandblasted glass divider. Architecturally, the decorative elements added over the last 60 years were stripped off, if you will, and um, large openings were created on the front elevation to improve light qualities to the more public rooms of each floor. It is as if we have sliced off 60 years of time and now forces the building to embrace its community without a mask, without a facade, literally. Urbanistically, it is reshaping the Langhouse typology with the transparency and modernity that fulfills the vitality of contemporary life. At the same time, when your neighbors gaze into your private life, the city is open to your private viewing from uh, this, this is taken from the living room on the second floor. To respect history and to live alongside history does not necessarily mean a certain Disneyfication, um, nor is complete preserving the past suitable in every case. With this project, we try to offer other critical methodologies to reinvent. This next project is um, also located in Shanghai. It's a boutique hotel, um, and we name it the Vertical Lane House, and I will explain why. This was what was given to us, an existing three uh, three-story Japanese, um, uh, former Japanese police headquarter building from the 1930s. Um, it's in an area called Cool Docks, um, a very popular um, spot uh, close to the Bund, but not exactly uh, the glorious Bund um, of the 1930s. For this project, one of our earliest architectural projects, um, we made an attempt at a different kind of preservation. 
Uh, this is an important quote for how we started considering the idea of a hotel, how travelers can find familiarity in foreign lands, how um, the notion of nostalgia, the longing of the past is at the very root of traveling. So um, this brings me back to kind of that notion of nostalgia using Svalana Bohm's idea of reflective nostalgia. Uh, what we try to do here is not to restore the building back to how it used to be, um, because there's no way you can bring back time or bring back history. But what we were trying to do is kind of inject the idea of the present and also um, relevance to everyday life uh, as we foresee in the future to kind of um, to, to weave them um, into what we found in the past. The program uh, was for a 19-room boutique hotel on the Huangpu River, um, and it's um, the most prominent river here in Shanghai. Um, the architecture concept behind our renovation rests on a clear contrast of what is old and new. The original concrete building has been restored, while um, new additions built over the existing structure were made using Corten steel, uh, and that's what you see above, the, uh, above that concrete structure, reflecting the industrial past of this working dock by the Huangpu River. Our structural addition on the fourth floor resonates with the industrial nature of the ships which pass through the river, providing an analogous contextual link to both history and local culture. The main entrance, uh, which you see here, takes you to an interior lobby, which is expressed through both a blurring and inversion of the interior and exterior, as well as um, between the public and private realms, creating a disorienting yet refreshing spatial experience for um, the hotel guests from for the hotel guest who might um, be someone who lives in the city or um, a traveler from far away. We saw this as uh, providing a uniquely Shanghai experience for the traveler who is not looking for the standard hotel encounter and hopefully uh, offering something that is uniquely Shanghai, uh, uniquely uh, found only in the city. From the ramps that move up and down the, atri the atrium space, the guest gains unconventional interior perspectives into other rooms, to adjacent buildings, as well as out towards the city. Um, this is that ramp. Um, uh, this, is, this brings you from the second floor to the third level. The public spaces allow one to peek into private rooms, while the private spaces invite one to look out at the public arenas, such as the large vertical window above the reception desk. Also, from this dining room, when you look up through the slits, you see between a pair of bedroom interior windows. And this is uh, from down below looking up. The visual connections of unexpected spaces like this one not only bring um, an interesting element of surprise, but also forces the hotel guests to confront the local Shanghai urban condition. This is uh, how basically a lot of places in Shanghai, a lot of domestic uh, homes uh, are, and including the, the link house that we live in here in Shanghai. These um, um, staircases um, are also uh, unique to this building, and uh, some staircases have been uh, kept as is. They uh, lead to nowhere because they've been cut off uh, at certain you know, periods of the history of the building. Um, they were walled off or they were knocked out, uh, but we felt 
really interesting. We, we felt that it would be interesting for a guest who comes here, uh, who can explore uh, parts of Shanghai, parts of the history of Shanghai, through going up and down these uh, corridors uh, that have the staircases that lead to nowhere. Um, such as um, also these visual corridors and adjacencies in Tai Nongtongs. Um, they allow for unusual conditions uh, like this one. Uh, here, one bedroom looks into the adjacent room um, right across from that visual corridor. So through the slit above the dining room we just saw, uh, you can see uh, you can see the adjacent room. So it's not a, it looks like a mirror image, but it's actually not, it's just total transparency. Not everything is working with O remnants here. There are also new design gestures, such as uh, this new courtyard, um, which opens uh, up into the sky. This project possesses um, memories of the city that would have otherwise been demolished if new life or new program was brought to the building. Uh, now, this part of the waterfront represents a fresh example of preservation without exactly preserving the material nature as is. The building on layers of what used to be there, uh, material, surfaces, spaces, light, um, and they represent the memories, right, of, of the city, of the building and it creates a uniquely new identity. Um, so, you know, recalling the idea of rest restorative or um, reflective nostalgia, uh, it's not restoring the building back to how it used to be, but it's kind of injecting a fresh air uh, to a, a historic building, um, but that has also uh, very much a lively future. Uh, this third project uh, is a project in a very different city. It's in Yangzhou. Uh, Yangzhou is a city about three hours train ride north of Shanghai. It's a, it's a resort uh, hotel. And um, it's located in Yangzhou because this is a place that is known for scenic lakes, among other attractions. Um, and the site is next to a beautiful lake called Slender West Lake, Shouxihu in Chinese. The program was to design a 20-room country retreat, um, and the site has been dilapidated for a very long time when we found it. The design brief uh, called for the adaptive reuse of several of the old buildings on this ruined site by uh, giving them new functions while adding new buildings to accommodate the hotel's capacity needs. Before starting the design, we studied the local village typology. These were traditional clusters of courtyard houses um, and some hybrid transformation through the years resulted from functional variations. Uh, one uh, one uh, project in particular um, is this one that we found uh, very interesting features from studying the courtyards um, of uh, this this private house called Ge Yuan in Yangzhou. Um, and this house uh, has interesting features that give hierarchy to the spaces uh, by way of the courtyards. They also create vistas from the, uh, from the hallways, their exterior hallways that are uh, also fire corridors. Um, and these corridors, they frame views of the sky and the earth. Uh, they encapsulate landscape into architecture and often um, does this interesting thing that blurs the relationship of the exterior and the interior uh, in strange but uh, really uh, fascinating ways. So these meandering alleys became our point of departure conceptually and experientially and architecturally. And so it's almost like everything about this project stemmed from this discovery. And uh, before starting the design, um, we studied uh, some of the things that needed to go into uh, the new uh, the hotel, the, the new um, um, functions. 
And so we started looking at also um, giving it a very clear orthogonal orientation that helps to kind of identify um, for a guest who comes here to identify their direction. Um, and also the planning department here mandate that we only build on the existing footprint. So as a strategy, uh, we formed cover walkways um, and that's the alleyways that, that I talked about a while ago. Um, that was kind of, you know, inspired by, um, by the village that, that, that we found here. Um, so these alleyways, they organize the different zones of the programs, uh, the new programs. Uh, they help to guide circulation and also they wrap the building within. So it, it becomes a sort of an isolated building since it's going to be a retreat. Uh, we found that uh, to be very relevant for, for the project. We also wanted to work with the traditional typology um, that I mentioned earlier. So, um, but, but yet creating an entirely contemporary and unique experience. Um, so something that belongs just to this project uh, and not um, recreating uh, history in, in the traditional way. Um, here you see the adjacent ponds and waterway. Uh, they became part of the total landscape. We were able to, um, if you will, borrow views uh, way beyond the perimeter of the walls. And this is a visual strategy that the classical Chinese garden employed uh, commonly as a, as, a, as a design tool. Within the walls, several of the courtyards are occupied by guest rooms and other shared amenities, such as the reception, library, and restaurant. Many of the building roof lines are confined within the height of the walls, just low enough uh, so that they're not visible from outside the compound. This is the reception courtyard. And the interior of the check-in area. In the courtyard, within the water, there is a sunken seating as part of the landscape. One of the semi-private courtyards from a bedroom suite uh, is here. So when you come out of your room, you actually can enjoy an isolated uh, space that is uh, undisturbed. And one of the courtyards formed by these walkways is this outdoor theater here. Um, there is no building, uh, unlike some of the other courtyards, it's all open air. And this is one of those walkways. Also noteworthy is that we employed recycled bricks as a cladding material here. We collected these from demolition sites from around the region and um, reassembled them in various bond uh, patterns. The brick walls, they add a textural reading, and over time, their patina continues to build. Uh, these photos are taken um, almost immediately after the construction ended. Um, so, you know, by now, it's been about a year and a half. Um, there's a lot more plantation, um, and um, um, the, you know, the, the bricks have patina um, so that, you know, through use, the, the space takes on a very interesting um, weather, weather look. And here, uh, these images, they show different time of the day, uh, bring in different uh, sunlight at different angles. Journeying along the walls, guests can also ascend towards openings above. So um, when you walk up before you actually uh, get above, um, this is what you see. And then when you uh, go above um, uh, some of the rooftop, you can actually uh, walk on, uh, like here, um, you gain like a totally different um, viewpoint um, of the surrounding area, area. So it's like a privileged view um, across the gridded landscape and beyond. So in closing, the idea of nostalgia here is quite uh, a different one. My earlier examples, uh, the split house and the water house were urban renewal conditions. They were extensions of that uh, laying house typology uh, 
because they were in Shanghai, and that was something that was um, uh, the inspiration that we used, you know, as a typological um, kind of um, 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 inspiration, uh, but something that we refer to as our uh, conceptual framework. Um, uh, they were also uh, traditional and residential, uh, and um, also we used uh, kind of the, the, the historic reference to recreate uh, like a hybrid, um, and they were also commercial in program. Um, this Yangzhou retreat um, was uh, first inspired by traditional alleyways and courtyard typologies that is found here in Yangzhou, uh, not other places uh, in China. And uh, so that they're completely rooted in this local and unique culture. And we examined um, further thoughts about one's movements, uh, moving in and out of their rooms, um, the retreat spaces, uh, and also uh, we thought about how this uh, was going to be kind of this enclosed community uh, within the city. Um, this is not too far from the city center. So here we also had um, a non-urban site, so different from uh, the ones in Shanghai, uh, where uh, the old buildings were already demolished. But these buildings uh, left their ghosts in the footprints. So the design came from a reworking of these footprints. How could we use them to create new buildings that serve a new function for future use, but still, but still preserve the nuanced experience so intrinsic to Yang Zhou's heritage and way of life? so that it is truly reflective of a certain nostalgia for the past culture from long ago, without any notion of physical restoration. We believe that these three projects exemplified well three different articulations of our thoughts and practices within the subject of reflective nostalgia. Thank you very much.